Hi everybody, I'm currently live streaming right now on Instagram, and I'll be doing this more often. But then, nonetheless, um, I had a really good conversation today with an attorney uh, for estate planning uh, and overseeing trust and estates. And one of the questions is, what do the beneficiaries require um, if they suspect fraud or wrongdoing? So I just want to quickly run that, run through that, um, and just give me a minute, okay? So oftentimes, sometimes a fiduciary will withhold information and other type of documentation from the beneficiary or even the guardian if the trustee, if the, if the beneficiary is a child or underage. And so one of the things we want to look at, right, and I'm going to type here for you guys. So consider conducting as a beneficiary or the guardian, consider conducting an internal review of business activities, um, you know, or the financial activities of the estate or trust. Right. So what are you going to need? OK, if you do have access to this information, that's great. But what you want to look for um, are the financial records. Right. And what does that entail? You're going to look for income statements. OK, a balance sheets. OK, and then oftentimes what we're also going to see is that the key document right for all investigations will be the general ledgers. Right. <clears throat> and why are we looking at the general ledgers more specifically? These are going to be claims of transactions that has occurred over the period under review, right? Over the years, over three years, several years, right? Why is it a claim? Because the fiduciary is responsible, okay, for recording the proper transactions of the estate or trust within its books and records, okay? So the general ledger will detail or list out each transaction okay so the general ledger is purely what we we will begin with okay and as a cfe or the forensic accountant what we're going to also do is we're also going to take a look at the bank statements right so let me go further so if you have access to bank statements and if i could cor type correctly okay bank statements we're also going to look at bank statements why because they offer support they offer support for the general ledgers. Okay, so this is very important. We're going to utilize the bank statements and compare the general ledger account bank statements, bank bank transactions to the bank statement transactions. Why is this? Because the fiduciary can hide fraudulent behavior or misappropriation of assets, embezzlement through manipulating the transactions within the record keeping process okay so what else are we looking for and then we're simply also looking for tax returns right did they file the tax returns properly are the are the assets valued uh in proportion to what is also known in the financial records and this offers more support okay but mainly the underlying key document is your general ledger if you have access to this information, you could begin your own investigation prior to seeking out an attorney or an expert like myself. Now, if you don't have access, say the fiduciary is withholding this information or for some reason hasn't gotten it to you, I highly suggest that you seek out an attorney, file a civil lawsuit, and begin the discovery process and force the fiduciary to provide these documents. Once when that begins, an expert like myself will identify the relevant bank statements and then expand beyond that. Okay, so and let me finalize this. When you do your own investigation, you're going to look for several red flags. Okay, you're going to look at are there patterns that I notice? Are there ATM withdrawals? Okay, of a pattern that have no support and no meaning behind them. Okay, are there receipts that I could review? Are there canceled checks? These are very important documents to obtain uh, in order to verify transactions. Another red flag you could often see is a large a lump sum withdrawal that has, again, no underlying supporting documentation. Say, if the fiduciary says, well, this was for labor cost or construction or improvement on properties and assets, well, you would want to see the vendor contract and that would be your next step. Well, why don't I see the vendor contract? Well, because maybe it does not exist. 
okay? And as a beneficiary, you have full capability of obtaining these documents. You are not um, barred from seeing that, okay? You may be barred from making business decisions, but because these are your assets, you have the opportunity and the responsibility to oversee that the proper administration is happening. So anyway, I hope that this five minute video or so help you guys understand what's going on and I really appreciate it. All right, thank you guys and bye live. All right.